and welcome to Rethink. I'm joined today by Simone Fenton Jarvis, Workplace Services Consultancy Director at RICO. Hi Simone, how are you doing? Hi there, hello, thanks for having me. Thank you so much for uh, for joining us today. Really, really interested to talk to you um, and see how 2020 has been for you at RICO. So our topic yeah. is uh, the world of workplace consultancy. Um, but I think a good place to start really is if you'd mind sharing your pandemic story. Yeah, um, I think, you know, obviously when the, the pandemic hit, um, it was obviously, you know, everybody get out of the office. And I think... Mm. At that point, um, as a workplace consultant, you kind of your heart sinks a little bit, and you think, yeah. "Oh, what's going to happen here?" And I think all the all the talk in you know all the kind of clickbait that was happening around is the office dead. Um, it was a bit of a. I definitely had a few weeks where I thought, "Do I need to start looking for a different career here?" Because mm. is is this going to be drastically different? That there's not a place for me anymore. Um, so Gosh. obviously, when when all that kind of fear weared off a little bit. Um, it definitely went more into the, actually, this is a really good opportunity to change a lot of the things that were wrong prior to the pandemic. Yes. So I think my story really has been very much from from March onwards. Obviously, I've spent now you know, nine months working from home, yeah. which is not on for workplace consult. No. Um, <laughs> um, and I think from from that aspect, it's, it's obviously, it's definitely been challenging some days. Um mm couple of offices and I can't wait to get back into more. No I completely agree with you there um, and f- my understanding is that you've been adopting a flexible um, working mindset at Rico long before the pandemic began. Do you think that's made you better prepared for this 2020 shift? Yeah definitely I think you know the and you could see even with the people I was working with the organisations mm. were very much nine to five in the office when they got told they have to get out of the office it was just like a totally, you know, unknown, not from yeah. just the point of view, but just the mindsets of people not knowing how to work from home, not knowing how to work and set up um, an evening environment at home mm-hmm. and concentrate. I think, you know, from from that kind of off, um, being at Rico where, you know, I'm kind of field based as such. So for me, I'm I'm always just flexible anyway. And I think it definitely helped because I knew how to work from home mm-hmm. uh, and obviously it's what I do. So it, it helped me anyway, but even speaking to some of my colleagues, it was made it easier, but it's still, it was still awful for people to go to the whole working from home all the time. Permanently. Uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. I think you just miss that social interaction, don't you? And particularly when you're in a role that requires collaboration and creativity. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, we've um, we've started going to our HQ every few Fridays now, and just to get in front of a whiteboard with a pen and just yes. do some kind of innovation and get together as a team because I think that's the thing that you know everyone's missing. Even for all the like the surveys and things that I've been doing, mm-hmm. every, the top thing is people, which is it's a no brainer really. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. And that brainstorming, it's it's just not the same if you're not in the same room, is it? No. No, no. As no, good as, as platforms are, as good as Zoom's teams are, having the, the opportunity to have those, those conversations as well at the coffee station and all the, the yeah. ideas that come to you when you're surrounded by your colleagues in a really yeah. motivated environment. Yeah, you can't replace that. Yeah. No. I think even like the background noise, like, so I'm mm. an introvert, yet I miss the people. So, yeah. I mean, who knows how the extroverts feel now? Um, and I think, you know, it's the... The background noise, I know if I'm working at home, I'm better if I'm working in the coffee shop and I can just hear a little yeah. bit. Obviously, I'm at home and it's deadly silent until yeah. Amazon turns up and the dog barks. Yeah. And it's just like, what? what is this? I can even listen to music and then that's not right either. And I think one of the, the key challenges that we've all accepted is, is operating this hybrid model. What mindsets and, and tools and uh, technology would you recommend workplace professionals consider to operate in a hybrid model effectively? Yeah, I think the, the mindset, um, and I've, I've been talking about this quite a lot recently, and I think you know, all of the stuff around flexible, agile, smart, you know, what does it all mean and hybrid, you know, how is it we're meant to be working? And I think the, the thing that I've kind of come to conclusion is we need flexible working policies. Yeah. We need a agile mindset. Mm-hmm. Um, we need a smart technology um, kind of 
tool base to allow us to work in a hybrid role and I think that's how I'm bringing all four of them things together to make mm -hmm. it sense for many who are still scratching their head around well, how is it that we're working mm -hmm. and I think you know, everyone's quick to put a label on it and actually it's what, what works for your organisation. And I think, you know, the, the more technology obviously you can have, um, then, you know, there's a, there's a fine balance between making sure it works for you and then making sure that everyone's just not kind of like, just, you know, it's a gimmick. Yes. Um, it, 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 I guess example, uh, I remember last Christmas, um, somebody bought my nan an Alexa and she was like, what earth do i want an alexa for <laughs> and absolutely honestly she spent a week just like turned off and she was like i don't want things listening to me and no. i think you know in yeah, when i said to her oh, actually you know you can you can turn your christmas tree lights off by telling alexa and it's the same you're bending over like in front of the christmas tree and like going oh every time and she was like oh right and i think again you know take that example how can we make sure that people understand why the technology is there yeah what the practical benefits are yeah, mm. yeah. desk booking you can look at visit management you know why is it there and how is it there to enable people and i think that's the bit we need to focus on now and not go too kind of far and getting a bit gimmicky mm -hmm. mm. I, I completely agree and and your experience of course spans from being a, a the, the world's first chief workplace officer in-house through to now working with customers to deliver the workplace yeah. consultancy yeah. How, how have you found that the two roles differ um in a way it's been they've been quite similar yeah. um, i feel like i'm the chief workplace officer now just for many organizations mm -hmm. um because you know the role of that was very much to make sure that hrit facilities were working together to drive employee experience mm -hmm. and i would that actually that is my role as a workplace consultant um you know part of most of my job is to make sure that you know facilities workplace are not working in silos no um, make sure they are considering everything else and to make sure you know we're bringing all the departments in mm -hmm. so i think from from that aspect they're quite similar i think the difference is obviously you know it's a bit different when you're working for one organization and you can really understand and live and breathe it yeah so, a week where I could be working with five, ten different organisations. Mm. So it's it's just much more kind of um, in a way it's good because you know you don't get that emotional kind of connection to the organisation. Yes. When stuff gets like you know a little bit kind of politics or you you don't get sucked into it because you're just like I don't work there. Yeah. So it's it's quite nice. You can um, have that independent viewpoint. Yeah. Yeah, it's a little bit kind of like, yeah, not my circus, not my monkeys kind of situation, I think. <laughs> <laughs> um, but you think it's bad advice, and I think that's the, the positive side of it, is that you, 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 you're, able, you're able to take a step back and really see everything. Yes. And your kind of emotions to mask. Mm -hmm. mm. And I, and I imagine that so a key part of my role is that I, I love getting to know so many different businesses and different sectors and, and different approaches. So you'll benefit from seeing that, um, which, which is really interesting and, and means that you can learn and, and take what works for one, one company and, 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 and um, uh, promote that to another, um, sharing best practice, of course. Um, but throughout 2020 then, how have your client needs changed and what are they asking for in 2021? Um, I think, you know, they've, they've almost, you know, so many people just don't know what to do next. And I think that's quite um, unusual. Usually, mm. you know, they'll come to you and say, I've got a pot of money to spend. I want X, Y and Z. Can you help me deliver it? And there's quite a defined kind of scope and brief and you, that's where you go from. Mm. I think now it's very much like we don't know what's next. What, what, what do we need to do? And I think... Yeah getting back to the and I've always been saying it anyways getting back to how your people work and what mm -hmm. their expectations are of the workplace and what the values are of the company mm -hmm. is your working style and I think that's that's the bit that's changed really is I think everybody's just become much more open to change um, I think resilience has massively improved mm -hmm. across individuals and across the company yeah. um, and infrastructure and everything and I think the difference now is people saying actually we don't need to do a almost a developmental change we're, we're up for a bit of transformational change and yes what is it we need to do um and i think the they're very much leaning as well on and trusting more the external mm -hmm. advances knowing that we are the ones that are working across many sectors many organizations and you know we can bring all of them learnings with us 
we've had the opportunity haven't we to show how well we can adapt when we absolutely have to so yeah um, and then my final question that I'm asking all of my guests uh, what's your biggest rethink lesson from 2020 please Simone um I think um before before 2020 I liked a bit of a plan um I <laughs> almost was one of them that sat there on New Year's Eve going all right so I'm gonna go on holiday in March I'm gonna go on holiday in September yes this is what I'm going to be doing at work. These are the projects I'm going to be working on. You can definitely throw all that up in the air now. And I think mm-hmm. what it's taught me is we don't need to we don't need to plan as much. Um, I think that agile and you know I'm in an agile mindset anyway, but I liked a bit of a, a brief plan that I was sticking to. Yeah, um, I think actually now it's even my own resilience is built, and I think be more agile in your thinking and get ready to sidestep basically mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. learning very quickly and I think that's probably my biggest rethink fantastic that's a really valuable lesson I'm sure for all of us thank you so much Simone (laughs) it's uh, been lovely to talk to you today thanks again for for sharing your insights thank you (laughs) thank you